Hi, everybody. Christy here. Edith over there. Hey. We recorded this episode before the election, so we don't know who won. But what we do know is you've been subjected to hundreds of political commercials. Thousands of commercials is more like it. Yup. And now they're stopped cold turkey. So we decided to make this whole podcast nothing but our original commercials. Wait, what? When was this decided? That's a great idea, Christy, because we're not selling anything. That's true, or trying to change anybody's mind about anything. We just want to make you laugh. I could use a laugh. 2020 has been a little trying, said Christy in her understated Minnesota manner. Don't you know? (laughs) So first, if this is your first time listening, here's some of what you've missed in the past four months. Do you want to learn everything about gardening and have some laughs along the way? If so, you will love Upside Down Tulips, a gardening podcast. Here are some oldies but goodies. Remember these? I'm going to garden with my palms up so the underside of my arms get tan. And then the revengeful ladder hit me in the head. I was swarmed by thousands of ladybugs. Learn things that only the ladies will tell you. Organic harvesting is not the same as organ harvesting. You can lift that lid of fat right out of the pot. It's philosophical. Would you rather have maggots in your eyes or needles in your knees? And now, for a limited time only, you can get all the episodes of Upside Down Tulips. Whether you're a newcomer to Upside Down Tulips or you're laughing along with your favorites, like... Deadheads Who Deadhead and Hummers Who Hum. What to do when you feel road hard and put to bed wet. I'm going to get that squirrel if it's the last thing I do. You lime quat. But there's more. Come into the garden with us and meet Shoe Living Woman, Jack Who Can Eat No Fat, Sherlock Holmes and Watson, Curmudgeons. All that and planting, weeding, composting, mulching, harvesting, and collecting your own seeds. This collection is the real deal, folks. And don't go looking for it in stores. You won't find it. It is only available here. And Christy, what do you think all of these episodes in your own home would cost you? I don't know, Edith. $200? No. $100? No. $50? No, Christy. They're free. No. Free? It can't be. It is. Shipping and handling included, it's free. And if you don't like it, you can return it with no obligation whatsoever. Upside Down Tulips. Available on streaming platforms now. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Hey, first-time listeners, you can always catch up. All the episodes are on your favorite platform. But in the meantime, enjoy our original commercials written specifically for gardeners. See you on the other side. Upside Down Tulips Has 2020 made you feel like you've been rode hard and put to bed wet? Do you think you're going crazy? Are your days full of stress and your nights full of scary pandemic dreams? May we suggest growing something? You can grow something almost anywhere. On a windowsill, a porch, a balcony, a community garden, even on the roof. Become a gardener. You'll be able to say things like, think the rain will hurt the rhubarb, completely unironically. You'll learn that rutabaga is not just what actors say in a crowd scene. Rutabagas are things you grow. Pass the time. The long, long times. It's only August. With the speedy radish and the slow-growing carrot. Water it, feed it, love it, then eat it. Or smoke it, we don't judge. Remember, in these tough times, bookmark your sanity. Grow something. Brought to you by the neighbors who hear you screaming in the night. (laughs) Upside Down Tulips is sponsored by Bindweed Single Service. Are you looking for that special person for a forever relationship? Maybe someone who shares your love of gardening. Find your special person at Bindweed Single Service. We'll find your match. We guarantee the roots of your love will grow deeper with time and that the ties at Bind will go stronger every year. You'll never be alone again at Bind Weed Single Service. Upside Down Tulips is brought to you by Mulch. You may already know the importance of mulch in your garden. Want to control weeds? Mulch it. Want to retain moisture? Mulch it. 
Want to prevent disease from splashing up on your plants? Mulch it! But did you know mulch has so many other uses? My sink is full of dirty dishes. Mulch it! My car won't start. Mulch it! My boyfriend, won't return my calls? Mulch it! My boss schedules too many meetings. Mulch it, mulch it, mulch it, mulch it, mulch it! There is no toilet paper! Mulch it! Ow! So whether it's pebbles, pine needles, straw, compost, or wood chips, get some mulch and mulch it today! Ah, summertime. The living is easy. The birds are chirping, the bees are humming, the insects are buzzing. Oh no! What are you looking at? Get out of my garden! Who? Me? Yes, you, you awful bushy-tailed rat! <laughs> I'm not a rat though, am I? I'm a rodent. Oh, looky here! A nice red tomato! Get away from that! I grew that from seed! I'm just gonna take a bite, yeah? <gasps> and then I'll throw it on your garden floor! No! Get out! They found the bubonic plague on a squirrel in Jefferson County! Well... That's a laugh, isn't it? Like the humans don't have your very own plague. I'm coming over there right now. Oh, wait. What's this? Under my arm? Uh, oh, a little lump. <coughs> Is it a bubo? Oh, <coughs> I'm feeling a bit feverish as well. <coughs> okay, I'm keeping my distance, but you get out. This is delicious. Best part of tomato I've ever had. I'm full. What's this over here? A cantaloupe? They're my favorite. So kind of you. You shouldn't have. You asked for it. <gasps> Where are you? Where did you go? Up here. In my tree. Hello. I see you've made quite a mess of your beans. And your eggplant, <laughs> your aubergine, it's destroyed. <laughs> They're fragile, though, aren't they? They can't withstand your throwing pots and pans and whatnot at oh, them. Oh, no. I've got to get a grip. Finding your garden not the peaceful and serene oasis you thought it would be? Maybe it's time for a nice cup of gardeners. Get a grip tea. Made with the finest dried lemon balm, Chamomile flowers, holy basil, dandelion root, lavender buds, whiskey berries, rum raisins, and bourbon grains. We'll have you feeling better in no time. In fact, drink enough and you'll be feeling nothing at all. Avagapa, <laughs> you're gonna need it. Oh, autumn, the falling leaves, the crisp breeze, the... What's this? I planted hundreds of bulbs yesterday, and they're all dug up. No! But I put cayenne and red pepper flakes on them. <gasps> My newly planted pansies, chewed to the root. Oh, come on. Was it that same awful squirrel who ate my tomatoes? Oh, do you feel that chill? Winter's coming. Oh, look how bushy my tail is. It's gonna be a long one. Hope I have enough food stored away. Wait a minute. What's this? It's bulbs. She planted bulbs. And look here, bulblets. Tiny little tender bulbs as an appetizer. <laughs> an amusement. <laughs> How sweet of her. She must have forgiven me for eating the tomatoes. What a nice woman. Oh, wait. Oh, no, she didn't. They're spicy hot. Ha, I didn't see no Mexican food is my favorite. Ha. <laughs> Delicious and so satisfying. I'm going to dig all of them up and hide them under my tree. Oh, and look here. <gasps> edimentals, pansies and violas. I don't really like edimentals, but if she went to all the trouble to leave me dessert, <coughs> I wouldn't want to be rude. <coughs> like me mum always said, finish your plate. <laughs> look here. It's like a buffet out here. Oh, they're delicious! Who oh, no. knew? All that work. I'm gonna get that squirrel if it's the last thing I do. High blood pressure day in the garden. 
have a cup of Calm Tom's high tea. No longer just for pricey restaurants, you can have high tea in the comfort of your own kitchen. Calm Tom's high tea. Organic tea leaves, rose hips, our love, and a little something extra goes into every tea bag. Have a cuppa. You'll feel better. Upside Down Tulips is sponsored by Farmer McKegg's Eggs. Farmer Ernie McKegg's Eggs are from happy backyard free ranging chickens. The freshest, biggest eggs you can buy. With prices so low, you have to wonder if the wear and tear on the chicken's butt is worth it. Find Farmer's McKegg's Eggs anywhere eggs are sold. He has a really big backyard. Hello, Mother Nature here. Have you heard of pluots, plum cuts, blueberries, and blood limes? No, they're not infectious diseases. What about ugly fruit, broccoli flower, or lime quat? No one would blame you if you think these are sophisticated insults. You lime quat. But no, these are not insults. These are hybrid fruits and vegetables found in many a fancy produce section. Now here's a tip from Mother Nature. If you're standing in a produce section and feel stupid because you have no idea what anything is, maybe get out of there. Shop local. Go to a farmer's market close to you. Ah, oh, there you are. At the farmer's market with simple and well-known fruits. How do you like them apples, fancy produce section? Brought to you by Shop Your Local Gardeners and Farmers. I'm a nurse and oh boy, my job is not easy these days. When I get home from a hard day at the hospital, nothing relaxes me more than taking off my scrubs, putting on a tie-dye shirt and listening to some grateful dead music while I remove dead flower heads from a plant to encourage further blooming. That's right. I'm a deadhead who deadheads. And that's why I use Jerry's hand pruners. As Jerry once said, sometimes we live no particular way but our own. I'm a flight attendant, and oh boy, my job is not easy these days. When I have to be repositioned from New York as part of an on-duty assignment to work a flight back to Los Angeles, there's nothing that relaxes me more than splashing on some patchouli, popping on some Grateful Dead tunes, heading out to my garden and removing the faded flowers of my plants to keep a neat appearance and to promote reblooming by preventing seed production. That's right, I'm a deadheading deadhead who deadheads. And that's why I use Jerry's hand pruners. As Jerry once said, hang it up and see what tomorrow brings. I'm a truck driver and boy, my job is not easy these days. If I have to complete a trip without freight to pick up an outbound load, nothing facilitates experiencing other planes of consciousness and tapping into deep spiritual wells than putting on my Birkenstock sandals, getting my 1977 bootleg recording of the dead at San Francisco, and heading out to my garden in the horticultural practice of removing spent flowers from ornamental plants. Since fading flowers are not as appealing and direct a lot of energy into seed development if pollinated, and putting them in an old skull I have laying around. That's right. I'm a deadheading deadhead who deadheads in a deadhead. And that's why I use Jerry's hand pruners. As Jerry once said, if you get confused, just listen to the music play. Hi folks, Farmer McKegg here. Sometimes your soil needs a little something extra to feed your growing garden. Why not try Farmer McKegg's cow manure? We collect the cow pie straight from the pasture. Produced by cows so free range and happy that they romp in the fields. That's right, romping cows. Cause Farmer McKegg's romping cows make the best BS. What are the sexiest celebrities and hottest influencers posting on Instagram? Their Birkin bags? Their designer dresses? Their cleavage? No, it's their gardener hands. Oh, yeah. 
Everyone who is anyone is gardening these days. Even if you don't garden, you can look fashionable without all the digging, pulling weeds, hoeing, raking. Here at Phoebe's Phenomenales, we have the latest trends to help make your quarantine manicure stand out. Ooh. Our Gardener Hands Treatment features artisan chip nail polish and real dirt meticulously embedded under your nails. Ooh. Plus, our advanced techniques will give you the appearance of cracked cuticles, scrapes and cuts, calluses, and even blisters. Uh -huh. Get that rough to the touch look that makes you look like you haven't worn gloves or put on lotion in months. Woo. For a limited time only, get a bottle of our special brittle nail polish as our gift to you. Mass required, social distancing enforced. And would it kill you to put down your phone and pop in a mint? Upside Down Tulips is brought to you by Mulch. You may already know the importance of mulch in your garden. Want to prevent soil erosion? Mulch it. Want to attract worms? Mulch it. Need pest control? Mulch it. But did you know mulch has so many other uses? My son plays too many video games. Mulch it. My sourdough starter won't start? Mulch it. My TikTok video won't upload? Mulch it. It still won't upload? Mulch it again. I don't know what I'm going to do about child care. Uh, mulch it? I can't pay the rent and I'm worried I'm going to be evicted. Oh, this is a tough one. I'm not sure if mulch can be of much use here. I have a compromised immune system and I'm afraid I will get sick. Mulch is definitely not the answer for this one. Yeah, I didn't think so. But for most anything else, get some pebbles, pine needles, straw, compost, or wood chips and mulch it today. I don't feel so good. Do you know someone who always looks on the bright side of life? Who says things like, every thorn has its rose, or what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Have you had just about enough of their unfounded optimism? Have we got the perfect thing for you? The Curmudgeon's Handbook of Dreary Quotations will get you through these times that are exactly as bad as you think they are. With sayings like, what doesn't kill you makes you gray and bitter. Or, here's one for an overachieving co-worker. Eagles soar, but sparrows don't get sucked into jet engines. Or the favorite quote for the year 2020. It's never too late to go back to bed. If you need to smack someone upside the head with a dose of reality, order the curmudgeon's handbook of dreary quotations today. Thanks. Upside Down Tulips is brought to you by the Society for Humming Hums and Hummers. COVID-19 has changed how we gather for special occasions. We need to wear masks and socially distance in very small groups. And sadly, no singing, as singing generates too many droplets into the air. That is why the Society for Humming Hums and Hummers asks you to consider humming. Humming behind a mask is safe, easy, and fun. You can hum at birthday parties. <laughs> at weddings. <laughs> at bar mitzvahs. <laughs> and you can also hire a professional humming soloist at baseball games until they cancel the season. <laughs> or for your very own private Broadway cabaret. <laughs> and if this thing goes on for much longer, for Christmas caroling. <laughs> Humming, it's nothing to sing about. Everybody, hello. This is Mulch. How you doing? I, Mulch, solve a host of problems in the garden. I loosen your soil, keep the moisture in, and keep the soil cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. What could be better? 
The fact that it don't cost very much, that's good. The fact that one of your neighbors might have a pile of mulch after getting their tree trimmed and can give you some for free, it doesn't get any better than that. In fact, I can do a lot of good almost anywhere. Almost. What the? Wh what's this in the aisle? It's getting all over my dress. What is this? I mulched it. You mulched the aisle of the church? Well, you're a dang fool. Thank goodness I found out now. I almost made a terrible mistake. Yeah, don't be a dang fool. Use me. Save water. Save your garden. I'm mulch. I'm at your service. Go ahead. Use me. Upside Down Tulips is sponsored by... Hey, folks. Due to the huge, and I'll admit it, unexpected positive response to the curmudgeon's handbook of jewelry quotations, we made a curmudgeon's calendar just for you. Every month has a different saying. On the cheery calendar hanging on your kitchen wall, there's probably a quote saying, April showers bring May flowers. On our calendar, it says, don't tinkle down my back and tell me it's raining. Look at September, the friendship month. Your calendar may say something like, there's nothing better than a friend, unless it's a friend with chocolate. Our calendar says, you can pick your nose, you can pick your friends, but you can't wipe your friends under the couch. Where your cutesy calendar might counsel patience by saying, quote, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, unquote. Ours says, you can lead a man to water, but you can't make him hit the bowl. The curmudgeon's calendar, speaking truth from your kitchen wall, supplies are limited. Christy, your garden looks great. Thanks. I've been mulching and deadheading and watering. Open up. I know you're in there. Oh, no, Christy. It's the yard Nazi. You mean the HOA? Same thing. Your door was unlocked, so I let myself in. An unlocked door is a violation of the Wind Springs Farms Covenant. Contract Article 17, Subset A2. It's Ida's fault. She came to visit and didn't lock the door behind her. She has a key. Christy... I can't believe you threw me under the bus. I'm sorry, I panicked. I'll never do it again. You bet you won't. Public transportation is not allowed near Wind Springs Farms. As per Article 3, Subset 15B, keep America safe. Now, I see you have unauthorized foliage in the front of the house. It's a pumpkin plant. I was going to give pumpkins to the neighborhood kids. I mean, it's beautiful, don't you think? Stop talking. If that's what you have so brazenly in the front, I can only imagine what you have in the back. Party in the front, party in the back. Excuse me? You're not helping. Sorry. According to the covenant which you signed, the only authorized landscaping is gravel grass or low-maintenance non-flowering shrubbery. Michael Tolan said, a lawn is nature under totalitarian rule. Mikhail Tolan did not sign the Wind Springs Farms covenant, did he? And you, Edith. You have unauthorized signs in front of your house. We don't care whom you support politically, who you think can love whom, and whose life matters. I don't think that's what We you have lawyers. You have three days to comply. We're in deep manure, Edith. Yeah. Imagine what would happen if she knew we were the hosts of a gardening podcast celebrating our gardening mistakes and victories. Speaking of which, let's go down to the basement and record our next episode. Good idea. That will make us both feel better. Let's go. Tough day. Pick yourself up with our funny and informative podcast, Upside Down Tulips. Hello, Christy here. Edith and I are in McCool Junction, Nebraska at Phoebe's Farm Fashions Runway Show. 
This is one of my favorite events of the year, as it answers the question, what will farmers and gardeners be wearing next year? It's starting. The first model is walking down the ramp. It looks like she's wearing a large, shapeless onesie. No seams. That is so avant-garde. This is a one-size-fits-all, and it will fit everyone from Tinkerbell to Yoda. I love it. Rather than old-fashioned overalls, whose straps and buckles can chafe after a few hours of hard physical labor, this is comfort first for the person who doesn't give a flying fig about what other people think. Oh, look how it floats around the body when the model does the turn. She looks like a hot air balloon. Beautiful. Here comes the second model with accessories. Look at that sun hat. Is that lace netting over the face? It's mosquito netting. Fashion forward and protective genius. An homage to Versace, maybe? And the gardening gloves. Even the smallest hands look like man hands in those. And the claws at the ends of the fingers for garden work? Billie Eilish nails. High fashion and utilitarian. Oh, this is the creme de la creme. I've never seen anything like this. Am I seeing 30 pockets in those gardening pants? Yes! Echoes of Givenchy 2005. It's like wearing a fisherman's vest on each leg. Not just pockets. There are loops where you can fasten your rakes and shovels, which she has done. It turns the gardener into a walking tool shed. Uh, oh, it looks like the model has fainted under the weight of the tools she's dragging. Well, it serves her right for weighing less than a hoe and a shovel. Christy, you don't mean that. Yes, Edith, I really do. We'll take a break now until they start the show again. Hey, Mulch here. How you doing? You good? Good. You know what I'm doing? Up north, I'm keeping gardens warmer. Down south, I'm keeping the soil cool. Way cool. Because I'm mulch. I can work wonders almost anywhere. Almost. It's the Montreal Canadiens versus the Detroit Red Wings. What a rivalry. And there they go. <laughs> what the heck? This is not good! You did this! No, I didn't. Get out of my face! You? Get out of my face! I can't! My blades are stuck in these wood chips all over the ice raft! Referee? Referee, s'il vous plaît! Yeah, <laughs> you see how that wouldn't work. But almost everywhere else. I'm mulch! I'm at your service. Use me. In your garden, where men with sticks I'm going to smack you. Hi, I'm Alexa Trebek, and I'm your host for Upside Down Tulips Jeopardy. Let's meet our contestants. Last week's winner, Darla. Hi, I'm Darla, and I won last week. And the contestant in the middle. Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm an alcoholic. We all are, Dave. Thanks, 2020. I'm Blair. I'm the CEO of a multi-million dollar tech company. Good luck, contestants. Now let's play. The categories are... Things we've learned on Upside Down Tulips. Wait, there's just one category? Is no one else seeing this? I see two categories, unless I'm just seeing double. (laughs) Darla, you're in command of the board. I'll take Upside Down Tulips for a hundred, Alexa. The answer is... What comprises 20% of a person's diet? Dave. What are martini olives? No. Darla. What are seeds? Yes. My buzzer is broken. I buzzed in. Didn't you hear me buzz in? Is no one else hearing me buzz in? Don't hit it so hard, Blair. Darla. I'll take upside down tulips for 200. The answer is dog vomit slime mold. Dave. What is, what happens when I barf on my dog? No. Darla? What is a harmless fun guy? That is correct. I'm a harmless fun guy. (laughs) Darla, you're in command of the board. I'll take upside down tulips for 300. 
The answer is plump things with a navel. Dave. Uh, who is Blair? Hey. No, Dave, that's incorrect. Why do I have to be next to Dave? Darla? What is a tomato? That is correct. Blair, stop banging your buzzer. It's broken. I've been buzzing in every time. We're going to take a break, folks. If you listened to Upside Down Tulips, you would have known these answers. Die, buzzer, die. So until we come back, maybe you want to listen to the latest episode of Upside Down Tulips. Oh, I do. Hello, gardeners. The sun is setting earlier every day. The nights are long and dark. Ah. It's getting colder. Summer's gone. Your tomatoes were full-bodied and juicy. Mm. Your melons were heavy and ripe and looked good. But summer's done now. Now... It's all about the root vegetables, parsnips, rutabagas, and carrots, deep in the ground, just waiting for your hands to pull them up. Ah. So gardeners, it's time. Open your arms and bring it all in. It's time to put your garden to bed and let nature Take its course. Let your garden lie fallow, soft and sighing, deeply sleeping and awaiting the kiss of spring. Until then, order a Farmer McKeague seed catalog and have sweet dreams about next year's garden. Farmer McKeague Seeds. For plants, the bees will love fertilizing. (sighs) And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, sermons in stones, and good in everything. One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. Will Shakespeare, quit being poetic and just weed the garden. Yes, Anne. I merely hold, as it were, the mirror up to nature. Just pull the weeds, Will. And don't pull up the beans like last time. Yes, Anne. To weed or not to weed. That is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the seeds and clutches of outrageous bindweed, or to take arms against a sea of weeds and by poisoning end them. Out, out, damned weed! Will, stop! That's the spinach. Oh, sorry, Anne. Tough day in the garden. Have a cup of Calm Tom's high tea. No longer just for afternoon high tea in a pricey restaurant. Calm Tom's high tea is for any time in your very own kitchen. Calm Tom's high tea. Organic tea leaves, our love, and a little something extra goes into every tea bag. I think it's going to rain, Will. Will you eat the corn before it does? Yes, Anne. (sighs) <sighs> Once more onto the breach. <clears throat> oh, blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage! By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Hail! You cataracts and hurricanes! Hail no more! You have drenched our green beans, battered the red tomatoes, and drowned the potatoes. No! <laughs> Cry woe, destruction, ruin, and decay. Will, get in here out of the storm. Come on, I'll make you some nice hot tea. And a poultice, please, for my battered head, and Ow. Oh, woe for the garden. It'll grow back, Will. All's well that ends well. Really tough day in the garden? Have a cup of Calm Tom's Very High Tea. No longer just for afternoon high tea in a pricey restaurant. 
calm toms, very high tea is for any time in the comfort of your own kitchen. Calm toms, very high tea, organic tea leaves, our love, and more than a little something extra goes into every tea bag. Are you a gardener who is also a football fan? Who used to time your Sunday garden chores in order to watch your favorite games? If so, you might be feeling a little blue, what with the uncertainty of this year's football season. But help is on the way. Christy and Edith, the ladies of Upside Down Tulips, will help you envision football in your own backyard, with you as the quarterback. Here we are on a brisk September day. I'm Christy, and this is Edith, and we'll be announcing the garden game today. And the gardener comes onto the field. It's chaos out there, folks. The neighbors are going wild. The dandelions are throwing seeds into the radishes. The zucchini is in spread offense and running out of bounds. The tomatoes are tired and bent over with their own weight. And the bindweed is in the slot. The gardener is on the field holding his hoe close. It looks like he's going after the bindweed. He uses his hoe to do a chop block, and he is chopping up the bindweed. Oh, that's going to cost him. That's a penalty, but the refs do nothing, and the crowd is out of control. And the bindweed has him in a tackle. The gardener looks left, looks right. He sees the acorn squash, and the squash is totally open. We've got the squirrels on offense to thank for that. The gardener breaks free of the bindweed. He goes for the acorn. He's got the squash. Looks like he's going for a Hail Mary. No. He's running a post pattern, running free from the back 40. And he's on the 35, the 30, the 20. He might go all the way. He's taking it to the house. Touchdown. He's definitely getting the MVG of this game, Edith. And no one deserves the most valuable gardener more. This has been a public service announcement from the ladies of Upside Down Tulips. This too shall pass, folks. Hey, Mulch here. How you doing? Did you know that people have been mulching since the 17th century? That's the 1600s. 17th century is actually the 1600s? Oh, wow. Anyway, gardens, farms, fields, flowers, mulch was used everywhere for hundreds of years. I've even been used to solve a murder. Yeah, I'm that good. Hello? Who's there? It's just me, Holmes. I've been searching the house. What have you found? Nothing, Holmes. No clues at all. What, ho? What's this, then? What? You see, but you don't observe, Watson. No, there's only one Sherlock Holmes. What is it, Holmes? It's a clue that leads us directly to the murderer. See here? Wood chips all over the room. It's elementary, Watson. Our murderer is either a woodcutter or a man who keeps a woodchuck for a pet. Hmm. How much wood, Watson, can one woodchuck chuck? Surely not this much chucked wood. Conclusion? It's a group of woodchucks kept by a fiendish woodcutter. I say, Holmes, there is another explanation. No, Watson. What have I always said? Eliminate all other factors, and the one which remains must be the truth. It was me, Holmes. I was mulching for fingerprints. You've heard of this new technique, surely? It isn't mulching for prints, Watson. It's dusting for prints. So, that's the factor I should not have eliminated. The factor of stupidity. So sorry, Holmes. I I was just trying to help. What ho? What's this? A bloody knife inscribed with a name. Professor James Moriarty. Holmes! Holmes, I found the murder weapon with the name of the murderer. I've solved the crime. Holmes! Protect your gun. Lower your water bill. Even solve your murders. Use me. Aren't that good? 
<laughs> hey, I'm the old woman who lived in a shoe. That's right. I got no name and I live in a shoe. You think that would be bad enough, right? <laughs> but on top of that, I got so many children, I don't know what to do. So I gave them some broth and put them to bed. And Child Protective Services comes around and says, hey, what's with the shoe? And you're just feeding them broth? Where are the vegetables? And I'm like, I live in a shoe. What do you want from me? Kids, go to sleep. It's seven o'clock at night. <sighs> so anyway, old Mother Hubbard, she lives over the hill in the house, a real house, not a shoe, says to me, you know, when my cupboard was bare, I grew a garden full of vegetables. I says, what? How do you know how to grow stuff? She says, I listen to this podcast called Upside Down Tulips. They help you. And they have a website and a Facebook page, whatever those are. Kids, shut up! I'm on my last nerve. So, anyway, I'm going to try growing a garden. <laughs> what do I got to lose? <laughs> Actually, I could lose the kids. They're looking peaked. So, I'll grow a garden. You could too. Upside down tulips. Subscribe today. If you're already subscribed, tell a friend. Especially if you have one that looks peaked. Hey, I'm the old lady who used to live in a shoe. I married Jack Spratt, who can eat no fat, and now I'm known as the wife that can eat no lean. That's right. I still don't have a name, but at least I don't live in a shoe. So now Jack Spratt, my kids, and his eight kids live in his cottage. I didn't know he had that many kids. I can only count the three. Kids, it's bedtime. Go to bed. Can you imagine eating no fat? Are you seriously? No donuts, no bagels, no bacon, no jujubes. He won't even eat one jujube. Kids, there's ho-hos and little debbies in the pantry. You have to promise to go straight to bed after you have your snacks. I don't know what to do with them. They never calm down. So, Jack says to me, you gotta grow some vegetables or I will divorce you. <laughs> well, there is no way I'm going back to that shoe. It's nice to live in a place that doesn't smell like feet. So, I started listening to this podcast called Upside Down Tulips. Told me everything I needed to know. I have planted, watered, and mulched my vegetables. Everything grew, and it's almost harvest time. <sighs> Upside down tulips. Subscribe today. Plus, they have that website thing and that Facebook thing. <laughs> like I could even stand to look at another face with all these kids running around. If you already subscribed, uh, tell a friend. Especially if you're married to a man that can eat no fat. Kids, stop it! And those animals don't belong in the house. What were you? Raised in a barn? No, we were raised in a shoe. <laughs> That is so disrespectful. Wait till I tell your father about this. Mr. Spratt? Jack? Jack Spratt, where are you? I'm down here, dear. Help! I'm coming! <laughs> oh, Jack, did you fall through the coal chute again? I was shoveling coal and the momentum took me through the chute. Unfortunate. And, and dusty. 
Last month, you slipped through the sewer drain. Yeah, a bit smelly. Last Tuesday, when it was storming, you took the umbrella and the wind took you to Umsberly. I followed you all the way there and gave you a nice soft land. Yes, thank you. That was kind. I'm glad I didn't hurt you. The kids cried for half an hour, and then they sold your stuff. They thought you were dead. Uh, speaking of dead, the garden looks well dead. There should be kale and potatoes and winter squash out there. I've had nothing to eat. I can eat no fat. Ah, Jack, I'm sorry. Didn't you listen to Upside Down Tulips, a gardening podcast? I did. I listened to it, and I planted, watered, and mulched. How often? Just the ones. Well, that's not enough now, is it? No wonder it died. Honest Jack, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. I thought the upside down ladies were just being excessive. Please, don't divorce me and send me and the kids back to the shoe. I know what. Why don't I subscribe? Then it'll come right to my favorite device and I'll garden as I listen. That's grand, old woman. Here, I have a present for you. Twinkies? My favorite. Because you know I can't eat no lean. You do love me, Jack Spratt. Tarside, the old woman. You keep me grounded. Stay grounded. Keep gardening. Subscribe to Upside Down Tulips. Well, that was fun. I hope it was. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, please give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Tunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. If you want to see pictures of our gardens, visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Special thanks to our friends and very talented actors. In no particular order, Karen Slack, Michael Morgan, Billy McBride, Leslie O'Carroll, Emma Messenger, Luann Buckstein, Abner Genesee, Michael Shalhoub, Matt Schneck, Brian Cusick, Paul Barillo, and a special thanks and congratulations to Benjamin Bonifat and Jamie Ann Romero, who just got engaged. Congratulations, you folks. Sweet. And also, thank you to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want to hear more of her music, go to denisegentilini.com, or you can find that link on our website. Don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Yay! Upside down.